Hi Taurus, welcome to your October reading. <laughs> if you haven't watched the Scorpio uh, video, I suggest you do so. It's across from you, it will only help. All right, so here we go. Your video is called The Rut, and not as in you be in a rut, as in you've been in one and you're finally done with it. So congrats, because that's a big thing. Now the ending of a period of stagnation usually comes with some pretty intense happenings. So prepare yourself. It's gonna be wild. Mercury is retrograde. It's very hard to get on the same page with anyone right now. It's very difficult to get across what you really mean. It may even feel like your impulses are counterintuitive. You're saying too much to the wrong people. You're getting upset with the wrong people. You're being nice to the wrong people. And you may be wondering, what exactly is going on with me? Why am I, like I'm usually, I know what's what, what's going on? Mercury. But there is a way out. Maybe try something new. Something you haven't done in a while. Something you never thought you would do. Something you've thought a lot about, didn't have the guts to do. Any of those will work. Now, Do you love it? Because I love it. The most important thing about October is no matter what the path, it leads you back to you. Who you really are, who you were before you fell into this space, who you used to be when you were at your best, but now you're better because you're at your best and you have the experience of hard times. This is beautiful. And it is all the affirmation that you need. There was a time when you were very open with your affection, when you trusted, when the idea of falling in love was the most magical thing. You're gonna find that again now. For a lot of you, your stress, for whatever reason, has been keeping you in a space where it makes the people around you feel like they can't do anything right. But after the 18th, they get such a shock because not only can you do thing, can they do things right, but you start to be super affectionate in a way that they've been wanting you to be for a long time. They remember who you used to be and they've missed you. You've missed you. Your stress will subside. The issues with communication, they will remedy themselves. All you have to do is when you feel when you're in the middle of that conversation and you can feel that you're just pushing your horns too deep into somebody, you know it yourself, I know you know it. Vedic Taurus, I know it, you know you know it. Stop, it's very hard to stop yourself in that moment because you're an animal based on momentum. It's very difficult to stop in that moment. There is a momentum that's brought you there and it is righteous. Stop anyway. We don't want to cut anyone too deep. Now, the cool thing about you getting back to you is that you're super attractive to everyone around you. It's not even about how you look. The Tauruses are beautiful, but it's not about how you look. It's something else that's coming off of you. It's just so magnetic. Everyone wants some, 
and that's very confusing for you because you're really trying to get away from the mistakes you used to make and yet you find yourself running right into perhaps a new mistake, an attraction that is extremely confusing. This is not my type of person. Why do I like this person? What am I doing? I don't even understand myself. Don't worry. You're only attracted to that person because you can learn something from them. You can learn something from the experience. Go ahead, do it. So what if it's confusing? It's still fun. On the 18th, Mercury and Jupiter go direct and suddenly things are a lot clearer, including your motivations for being quite hard to please over the two weeks prior. And then on the 23rd, the sun moves into Scorpio across from you. And then Mars moves into Scorpio at the end of the month on the 30th. You must, you must, you must spend a little time and get your emotional life, especially your romantic life, in order. It's very important because love is important again. Some of you may feel like you're waking up from like a 10-year nap. And now all of a sudden your libido is back and you're looking around and something has happened prior to this sparking up of the libido, something that freed you. It doesn't mean you necessarily enjoyed whatever it was, but it was something that set you free, something that you were held down by, and now it's gone. Let's move ourselves into the light of this sunset, shall we? It's also time to reorganize your money. Money is good, but money will get better. Any fears that you've had about money, you will realize as Saturn goes direct in the middle of the month that they were unfounded, but it's okay. It's not that you have to worry about money. You should just find a better way. It has to do with finding a rhythm that works for you. And that goes for working, it goes for saving, investing, playing, spending, consuming. It also has to do with how you view yourself and your work and how that's reflected in what you ask for in payment your pricing, how you negotiate your salary, how you price your products or services. After the 18th, you begin to rethink it because they should be reflective of your value, of your skill. That's one of the things that I always, always stress, always to everyone. You must price things properly. Don't price things out of a fear or feelings of inadequacy. You know your value. You know the value of what you bring, what you do, what you make. Price accordingly. And anyone who doesn't want to go along with that, anyone who wants you to do them favors, anyone who gets aggressive with you because you are finally beginning to price yourself at your actual value and worth, well, that's a very, a very good indication for you right there that they don't deserve to be a part of your life. Also, can we get rid of all those people who say they support you but never put their hand in their pocket? I mean, not even for a dollar? Okay. You have something much bigger to concern yourself with right now. And that is how the world views you and the reputation that you have. That's that Taurus card being first out. You're building something right now and October is very important for it. You don't know who's gonna be looking at you and what they're gonna be thinking, but 
if you see it like everything you do and say will either add or detract from your reputation, you'll be okay. See yourself on that center stage and everything is being scrutinized. But if you're crushing it and you're doing everything that you're supposed to and you're doing it well, then it becomes a time where you are really not only appreciated by people, but your reputation is elevated and people have the most wonderful things to say about you. And it will improve your income, especially that idea of you elevating mixed with Jupiter going direct. Now let's talk about your mental. When you get stressed out, you get mean. We know this. You will be stressed out just because you have a lot of work to do, but I want you to remember something. And I'm going to sound like my mom here, not my favorite thing to do. Sometimes we just have to be grateful that we have work to do. That's an Aries speaking. And you know what? She's right. When you start to feel really overworked, just remember that there are a lot of people who would be grateful to have the job you have. No bullshit. No pun intended. But that stress, it can, it can get to you because it's the stress of wanting to do more in a time where all the planets have been pulled back and now are going to be let loose. This is not the time to do more. This is the time to plan. You've already done everything. Now you're just waiting for the fruition, right? So now it's time to plan your future and let the work that you've done catch up with you. On October 6th, we have a new moon, but don't be, don't do this. Your words can really hurt people right now, but just leave that to one side. Your words can really hurt you. They can hurt your reputation. They can hurt, hurt your earning power. Okay, so no matter how much you want to and no matter how much they deserve it, don't say anything. Oh, it's just not worth it. And honestly, people wait for you to say things just so they can say that you said something and they always misconstrue it because you never say it as bad as they make it seem. But you have to understand they're not overblowing it. They're not being hyperbolic. They're not saying what you said because... They have to say it more extreme because they can't mimic what it felt like when those horns went into them. So they have to use additional words to try to get that feeling across. And it's very dishonest, but it's their way of making others understand how bad you hurt them. It's still not fair though. So the new moon on the 6th, it may be time to let go of a vice. And for you, generally, that vice has to do with those solitary moments where you allow yourself to slip into a deep sadness. That's a vice. This is more than just being upset. This is more than being sad. This can be like an addiction. We talked about this years ago. This can be something you almost look forward to getting home and doing, where you can hide in your bed, stay awake all night, and then hide from everybody else that something is even wrong. It's, it's double-sided here. It's the sadness that you allow yourself to languish in, and it's also your complete inability to tell anybody about it. You're incapable of sharing this with people. It's too embarrassing. Especially because so many people that know you understand how the general public flocks to you, that you are so attractive, so it makes even less sense to people. How could you be lonely? Everyone thinks you're hot. Everyone thinks you're sexy. Everyone thinks you're beautiful. Everyone thinks you're nice and helpful and reliable. How come you feel lonely? So you feel stupid even saying anything because then you're going to have to explain that like even the dopest people have problems, God. Like, no, you're right about all that, but also like I'm human. 
There might be a few things that are causing this Nine of Swords loneliness. You know, when something doesn't come to fruition, when something is not brought to completion, it really, really bothers you. I think because it reflects poorly on you and your sense of resolve, right? So it makes you feel like you're not doing enough. Like you are in some way subject to the help or charity of others. You couldn't get it done yourself. Perhaps it's time for a little perspective. What you really need to do is understand that sometimes even though you pour everything you've got into something, it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, that's okay. If you're dealing with a very intuitive person and you know that walking away from them right now would be the worst thing for them, I understand your empathy and your care, but you still, you gotta go. If it's not right, it's not right. The perspective with the High Priestess and the Eight of Cups is also when you pull back enough, you can see what projects work, what relationships work, what new ideas you've implemented work, and what don't. And no matter how invested you are in them, if you can see very clearly that they don't work, it's time to let them go. You will heal, you will get new cups, you will fill them up again, you will be happy again. Promise. Proms, proms, proms. Also, you have this issue with abandoning things, you know? You don't want to be that person. That's okay. Try not to see it as abandoning something. Try not to see it as abandoning a part of yourself. That's the hang-up. You put so much of yourself in everything that you do that when you have to say goodbye to something, it feels like a judgment on you and what you put into it. That's why the high priestess, you need a little distance and a little disconnect from things to be able to see when something is not working anymore and needs to go. That is not a reflection on the quality of your work or the quality of your love. Sometimes things just don't work. You have to get rid of them so you can replace them with something that does work. That hero effect card tells us right at the beginning, this is a season where you have to be completely yourself and it is a season that will bring you back completely to yourself. And part of that, of course, is going to be having to leave behind some things that you started when you weren't really yourself. That winning that you're waiting for that these retrogrades has kept you from. It's all coming. The road ahead is so bright and you can walk so very far. You have the energy, you have the ethic. By the end of this month, you have a stellar reputation if you don't have one already. You know and feel your own value so deeply. So of course, victory, long-term victory is assured, inshallah. Be careful in how much you consume and be careful with this little cute love interest coming in. It will be great for you. It will make you feel all the things and be super wonderful and you'll love it and you'll be recharged and you'll be so happy. But the other person may feel like they're dying. Hey, this is the way I like to look at it, okay? If you're honest with somebody and you let them know that messing with you could ruin their life because they're never going to find anybody else like you or who likes things as much as you do, you've done your part. You've told the truth. You, The person has been duly warned. If they would still like to 
try it out, that's really on them. You can't feel guilty for abandoning them. You can't feel guilty for abandoning anything that you've put your energy into that doesn't work anymore. Sometimes it's not the quality of the energy or the quality of the work at all. Some things just aren't meant to be. In the same way, whatever this little confusing flirtation is that's going on, it's not meant to be understood. It's meant to be felt. It's been a while since you really felt something deeply allowed yourself to. So let yourself. And if they get their little heart broken in the process, you know you warned them. And be kind to them. Let them down easy. But you deserve it. You deserve to have some adventure in your life. And that's a big theme for October for you. A little daring, a little adventure, a little risk, a little tryst, a little romance. Why not? Feels good to have the sun shining on your face again. It feels good to know that you're winning again. It feels good to know that you've come back to yourself again. so proud. You are the quiet ones when it comes to your pain. And you have dealt with it so admirably. And you deserve this season of winning so much. So let yourself have a little fun. Take a little risk. Have an adventure. Have a little romance. Celebrate. You know how you like to celebrate. A fine looking person, some good food, an opulent, relaxing atmosphere. Yeah. We're out of this rut and we're never going back. Love you. Hi, Taurus. Welcome to the second part of your reading. <clears throat> so, there you are. <laughs> I love when that happens. And it's the perfect time, you know? Because if we're talking about leaving judgment behind, opening up to having more fun, letting yourself have fun, getting out of your own head, sure, you take the lessons with you that you've learned. There have been many. But now it's time to move along. The Six of Swords says, don't forget what you've learned. Accept your part of the responsibility. Take the teachable moments with you. But it's time to move on. This can apply to you breaking out of your own rut, losing somebody important. Somehow things change. And they needed to change because you had gotten way into your own mind. And as they change, you pick up a lot more power. Now, what do you want to do with that power? You can use it to be very aggressive and hurtful with your comments, you can use it to take your irritation and frustration out on others. You can be really mean if you want to. But ultimately, the only person you're going to hurt is you. On the other hand, you can try something different. Maybe instead of taking out your frustrations on whomever happens to be around at that moment, maybe instead you use this energy, this frustration that you're feeling until Mercury and Jupiter go direct, maybe you use it. Maybe you work against it. 
Maybe you open up and start talking to people about it, about the frustration that you feel. See, right now you can be adventurous or judgmental. You can live your own life or you can comment on the lives of others. One of those should sound way more appealing than the other. Why is it important? It's important because in some way or other, you have been stuck. And there's a lot of judgment around it. And you may be too ashamed to even admit it to yourself. But whether it's you judging you or you judging others, it's time to pull back and gain perspective. We love the high priestess. And she comes up quite often in our readings because Jungian tarot is about understanding the mind. And one of the most important things when it comes to understanding the mind, your mind and others, and therefore understanding their behavior, is perspective. And that's what the High Priestess guides us to do. Step back and gain perspective. Step back behind your e own emotions, even. Behind your sense of morality, even. And see things as clearly as possible. When you look at things from behind the veil of judgment, there's not much to do except to be adventurous. Once you stop looking for that approval in others, you stop demanding their need for your approval. When you're judging someone, one of the things that you're giving away about yourself is that you really want them to approve of you. You want them to judge you as you're judging them, just as they should be seeking your approval and they're falling short. That's why you're judging them. You're also seeking theirs. The very cool thing about pulling back behind the right and wrong, behind the moon representing your emotions, the coolest thing about it is that you lose that need to be affirmed and so naturally, you also lose the need to affirm and condemn. Now, some of these situations, they deserve to be left behind. Some of these bad habits, they deserve to be left behind. And leaving them behind brings you quite a lot of victory and a long, prosperous road. But the only way out of this rut is to be okay with walking away from many, many, many filled cups. You are one of those signs that attract extremely obsessive cross watchers who get in the comments and curse me out saying, I can't believe you're telling her or him or them to leave me. So let me be very clear. I don't think this is about a relationship. It, co it could be, of course, but I don't think it is. I think this rut doesn't have anything to do with relationships. It has to do with you keeping yourself stuck in a cycle that took over. Now is the time for fresh air, fresh new moods, fresh blood, a fresh new something to crave, something to go after, something to want. In the Huberman Lab podcast, Andrew Huberman talks about how having something to crave, something to seek, releases quite a lot of dopamine. To want again means that first, you need to be empty. See, you haven't wanted, but you haven't had it either. You've been stuck somewhere in the middle with things that didn't work anymore, but left you 
unable to pursue something different. The Eight of Cups is one of the hardest decisions we make in life. But the results are always very sweet. You will have Scorpio move, uh, Venus move into Scorpio soon, on the 7th. And your love life lights up like a Christmas tree. You can have whoever you want. It's okay if you don't want them long term. Yeah, you are that long term sign. And yes, you do get attached. But that's not you right now. Right now you want to play a little. You want to have a little fun. Don't be surprised if it leads to something long term. But keep in mind that whomever you engage in this activity with, they're going to get hooked. They won't be able to get enough of you and they're going to tell you so. So be prepared for that. You have so much love energy, especially then we have, um, not V, I'm sorry, I meant Venus moves into Sagittarius, not in Scorpio. I keep saying it, Venus is in Scorpio right now. Venus moves into Sagittarius. So it moves into actually an even more powerful place for you when it comes to love. It moves into a place of deep commitment. So that's why you have to be careful. That person, whomever you choose, they will get addicted to you. They will want something long-term. It will hurt them if you don't want them in the same way. So if all you want is a bit of fun, say it beforehand. It's Mars that then moves into Scorpio on the 30th. And I don't think you're going to want to explain anything to anybody then. So... Do all your organizing, reorganizing, explaining, finding that rhythm that you want to find both in money and love. Find it before the 30th. But I'll speak to you again before then. Inshallah. Now, about that money. How long are we going to downplay our abilities and keep our prices low out of fear and insecurity? How long do your prices have to reflect the rut and the sadness? No more. No more. Jupiter goes direct and your income improves, but also because you step up and charge more and take control of these feelings and thoughts and banish them. It's very, very important. Now you creating a stellar reputation for yourself also doesn't hurt. And that's indicated in your astrology. And we see it here. You are the most Taurus, Taurus, Taurus right now. And that is a wonderful thing. Work can stress you out, especially if you have taken on a new identity at work. It can cause quite a lot of stress, but organizing your time is the way out. You just have to get better about creating a schedule that works for you around work. Okay? Again, on October 6th, we have this new moon and it becomes very obvious to you that there is a vice that you must absolutely let go of. Whatever that happens to be, it is extremely detrimental. I think you even hate yourself for it. And you have to stop. And October is going to throw that right in your face until you learn it. Okay, every time the universe presents us with a learning opportunity and we don't take it, the lesson gets more and more harsh. 
So my advice would be, when your gut tells you it's time to let go of this vice, do it. Reinvent yourself. Stop getting stuck in these cycles of pain because your habits contribute in large part to that. Okay? And the last thing here, unfinished business. That allergy to abandonment. You're not abandoning something. Reinventing yourself doesn't equate to hurting others. They can feel abandoned by you. That's fine. And I know you never want to be the person that does that. That's also fine. But your re reinvention has nothing to do with their happiness. And if somehow their happiness is contingent on you staying exactly the same, well, that's completely unhealthy. So whatever doesn't work, tell the truth. Say it doesn't work. Say it's not my path. Say it's not what I want for myself. I'm moving on and completing things that actually matter more to me. I'm sorry I have to leave this in the middle, but it no longer works for me. Any projects that are not working for you, drop them. Get rid of them. Complete what needs to be completed. Complete what you love and want to do. And tell the truth about the rest because you're right. It's not on your path. Why should you? Why should you continue down a road that's not yours? Okay? We also have the lover's card here representing that Mercury energy and Mercury retrograde. So it's very possible that there are a few people from your past around. They may even say some very shocking things to you like, now I realize I want to be married. Now I realize that I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go near that because it's not honest. It's desperate. And yes, I admit people do get quite desperate when they've had you and can't have you again. But that's no reason to date them or even entertain them. Okay? I love you, love you, love you. The extended links are below for Vimeo and PayPal, but you can also join the Taurus tier on Patreon where everything is up early or the Taurus plus the Za tier on Patreon, which is part one, part two, and the extended, as well as the walking meditations that we do, which are super fun. Be very careful. There are some scammers going around asking for PayPal and Venmo and Cash App to do readings. They're opening fake accounts, impersonating a lot of different astrologers. Just know that I will never, ever, ever message you and ask you if you would like to have a reading. I will never ask you for any money through those different platforms. If you would like to have a personal reading with me, please click the Cameo link below. It is the only platform on which I do readings. Okay. There are two options with Cameo. You can have a seven to 10 minute recorded reading that's sent to your inbox. Or once a month, you can do a FaceTime one-on-one -on -one reading with me for 15 minutes. Both of those options are available below. All right. All right. I love you, love you. You're gonna love your costume next month. And I'll see you in the extended.